iPad users rejoice because today is the day that iPadOS 26 is finally available to the entire public. So in this video, we're going to go through every single change and feature that's coming to your iPad, as well as see if this new windowing system, files menu, and liquid glass is worth all the hype. So sit back, relax, all the timestamps will be below for you guys to skip around if you need to. But now, let's talk all things iPadOS 26. But now before we continue, if you do enjoy videos like this one, consider subscribing to the channel to keep you guys up to date on all things Apple. And I know people are going to ask about the wallpaper. That is part of our channel membership, so definitely consider signing up. Help support us and you guys get anywhere from 8 to 10 wallpapers per month that are brand new and customized. But now let's talk about compatibility first because that'll be the most important thing. So I'm going to put the compatibility list up here on the screen so you guys can see and pause to see exactly which iPad you have and see if it's a supported device because one of the best features of iPadOS 26 is that they're not watering it down for older devices, and the supported list of iPads is absolutely insane, including getting the windowing mode on some of these older iPads that didn't think would be coming to those iPads. But you're basically talking about the 2018 iPad Pro and newer, both the 13-inch and the 11-inch, as well as a third gen iPad Air and newer. And then you have the eighth gen regular iPad and newer, which you can get for like $150 used on Amazon. And then of course the fifth gen iPad mini and newer. But now that we have the compatibility and the support out of the way, let's actually talk about what's new in iPadOS 26. Well, welcome to iPadOS 26, everybody. We're running this on my M4 13 inch iPad Pro. And I'm gonna give you guys an idea and a walkthrough of what liquid glass is and what it looks like. You probably just installed it and you're getting all this new look. As you can see, my widgets are all kind of translucent and transparent. I have different opacity levels on all the applications. And for the most part, third party applications, even from the very first beta, did a decent job of getting into this liquid glassified kind of UI. But this is going to be everywhere alongside everything that you do moving forward. Of course, you can change it, which we'll touch that in a second. But first, let's get into the lock screen to see what that looks like. As you can see, when you pull down your notification center, you see that liquid glass design First and foremost, when you are pulling this down to see exactly how it's affecting the rest of the UI as you pull it down. The next thing you see here in my home screen or my lock screen is just how big the numbers are for the time. So if I long press on here, we'll customize it and you can get to get an idea of some of the new changes. For the most part, the changes aren't that drastic. You just get a new clock widget here, which you can then make smaller and make larger. If I do want to change it, I tap in here and I can change the different fonts over here, which is normal. The one thing that is new is going to be the enlargement or the resizing of the fonts. The only font that can be resized is this first one. All the other ones remain in that old size, you know, to each their own. And then you have this new kind of world clock right here, which you can tap on to get the different languages and the different versions of those clocks. So if I want to, I can click on Arabic and then it'll give me the Arabic numbers. And if I go back here, I can keep changing all the numbers and I'm going to go back to Western to give me that time right there. I actually like the larger look of this clock. So to each their own, but that is where you're going to see the liquid glassification and some of the changes on this lock screen. Then when you're done, obviously you just press done, tap in here, we swipe up and we're back to our home screen. The next thing you might have noticed there is that there is that new effect when you do go back to your home screen. So let's try that again. If I tap in here and then swipe up, you can see that it bounces into place, which is a nice little UI change. The next thing that you're going to see in terms of UI is going to be in the actual control center. So the control center also adopted that kind of translucent and liquid glass UI. The best way to show this off is if we are in an application. So if I open up something like LumaFusion, for instance, so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller here as we open up LumaFusion. And if I move this control center down, you can see how the liquid glassiness starts to take effect depending on what you're looking at. You can see that it is a little bit translucent. There is a little bit of a blur. But again, functionally, nothing much is changing here. This is just a new look, a new feel, and it just makes your iPad and your iPhone feel like a new device. There is some nice little kind of bounce and stretch here that you can do as well. So everything is bouncier, bubblier, and at the end of the day, it's just a look and aesthetic more so than function. You will also begin to see the liquid glassiness in different meters and different sliders throughout the UI and the settings menu and things like that. But if you really don't like it, you just long press on the home screen and go to the edit button on the top left hand corner, go to your customize that it says right there, and then you can get rid of it by just going back to the normal colors, which makes it a lot more legible and the readability isn't really an issue. You, can, you still have your dark mode icons, you still have your tinted icons if you want to. And what's cool about this is that you can actually color match it to your iPhone color. So in the new version of iOS 26, there'll be an additional button down here to color match it to your iPhone, as well as color match it to your first party Apple cases. So that's actually a really cool kind of ecosystem moment. But this is the clear one. And then of course you still have your resizability, so you can make them bigger, smaller if you want to. And that's always good to know. But I'm gonna go with the colors here just to make it a little bit easier and more legible once we move forward. 
So now let's get into what everybody wants to talk about, which is the new windowing mode, because this is going to fundamentally change how the iPad functions, at least in terms of productivity and multitasking. So first, let's open up the settings menu. In the settings menu, it looks very familiar, but if we go down to where it says multitasking and gestures, you now have a couple options up here. It changed up from before. You have your full screen app. So if you tap on this, whenever you open up a application, it'll open up in full screen and it's going to be that familiar kind of experience that you've grown to know, either love or hate with your iPad. Then you have your windowed apps, which is going to be the new mode, which we're going to play with mostly. And then you have stage manager, which is that kind of in between windowing mode that we've had since iPad OS 16, which was okay and got the job done for a little while, but the windowing mode is where you want to be. Once you do open that up, you get that little animation that it shows you and you just swipe back up and you're back to where you need to be. So now every time you open up an application, so for instance, if I open up the home application, it now opens up in this new windowed mode. This is where things are going to change. I'm going to give you guys the anatomy of what this looks like. So the first thing you're going to notice with each new window is going to be the traffic light management on the top left hand corner. So if you tap on that, it's going to enlarge. And the beautiful thing about this is that even though the touch targets are technically smaller, so if I press on this again, you can see how small they are. If you use your finger, this is still a touch first interface and Apple kept that in mind. So it does enlarge. And then if you want to minimize it, close out or make it larger, you can do that. So let me show you how that's done. You just tap on the X and it's going to quit out of the application. Now, when you press the X, if you go into multitasking, that application is gone. So in order to keep it into the multitasking, let's open up that window again, tap on here, and then press the minimize button. It's going to minimize itself and it should show up in multitasking as it does right there because we didn't close out of the app. We just minimize it familiar kind of situation as it is with Mac OS. And then you have the enlarge button. So the green button makes you go full screen and you go back into your full screen mode, but you'll always have this little tab on the bottom right hand corner where I can just grab it and then resize it however I see fit. And then another thing you notice right away, especially if you compare it to stage manager is just how fluid it is because it's pretty much an infinite canvas. So there's some applications that limit the size of how big or small you can make it. For instance, something like affinity photo only lets you go so small because you know, their UI is, they're the ones that are locking that into place. But for the most part, most applications can get as small as this or go full screen or go whatever aspect ratio you want without really losing anything from a functionality purpose. And you can see that in real time, it's going from like iPhone size app to iPad app to then full screen app. So it's very fluid, very responsive. And I just love how easy it is to use. Now, when it comes to more multitasking, if you do tap on here again and then hold down on the green button, you get some new viewing modes. So you have your split view modes. You can also go up and down vertically, horizontally. You can go even up to quad box if you want to. And let me show you how you get that done. So let's open up a couple other applications. So let's open up something like Chrome, maybe. Let's open up something like the Files app. And let's open up another one. Let's say, let's open up, let's open up Twitter here. So now you have all four of these applications open. And if you want to view them again in that quad box, you just go here, long hold, press the quad box, and then it'll quad box it for you on your behalf. And then another thing that you're going to notice, there's a lot of quirks when it comes to iPad OS 26, and you'll learn them as you go along. You know, I've been using the beta for the past two months now, and now I feel like I have a good handle on it. And now it's all second nature, but you can see that you still have your split view tab individually. So I can actually go here and grab this little stick and actually move these back and forth to resize them and they're resized individually. So the bottom one, I can then resize a different way if I want to resize it this way. The only thing you can do is resize it up and down. You can only do it split view style. So vertically, you can resize them, not horizontally to each their own, but that's just the way that Apple's doing it, at least for now with iPad OS. But I love how they did implement that. And then if you do want to go into multitasking, you do multitasking the same way you did before, but there's a secondary step. So if you just swipe up from your trackpad or swipe up from your home screen. So if I swipe up, everything kind of flanks itself to the left and right, and then it'll stay in that position. If you want to go to your home screen and don't care about that, you just swipe up again and those applications go away. But if you go into your multitasking, those applications will be in those resizable sizes. You tap on one, it'll open it up and it'll start to open them where you actually left them before. As you can see, this Twitter is left over here in the same size that I left it at before. And I can go over here and resize and do whatever I see fit. But if I bring back all the applications, so if I swipe up, I can start to open these other ones up and they'll be back exactly where they were left before. Tap on this one. And now you can see that these apps are there. And then there's another mode called expose mode. So if I go up here and hold it, you can see that this is kind of like one group of applications and that's where they're going to stay. This is your expose mode and you can have up to 12 different applications in one kind of view at the same time, which is more than enough for people on iPad OS. Now you're probably asking yourself, Fernando, I miss split view. Fernando, is slide over still here? So to give you guys an idea, slide over is completely gone. 
The version of slide over that we had before, even if you go into the regular full screen app mode, there is no more slide over for better or for worse. I know some people are really gonna miss that, but we'll get used to it as it is. But they do have a version of split view. So if we open up, let's say Safari, let's open up another, so let's open up Chrome. What you can do here is actually twofold. So you can go, go to your three dots up here, long press, and then go into split view if I want to. So do one of these. And now both of these apps are in split view and I still have that little middle guy right here to be able to resize them how I see fit. So that's one way to get into split view. It's very easy, very self-explanatory, and it's pretty much exactly the same as it was before, in my opinion. But now if I swipe up, swipe up again, let's say I open up a Chrome tab again. Let's resize this a little bit. Let's say I open up something like the home application and they're kind of in their own little situation. I can then grab them and actually kind of throw it into the corner and then it'll go into full screen mode. But I can also do the same thing to go into split screen view. So if I swipe it like that, move this around, swipe it over to the left, and now I'm in split view again. So there's different ways to get to the point that you want. It's just a matter of sitting there learning. And for the most part, if you think you can do it with a finger flick or with momentum or even kind of like the software physics that are in here, more than likely it can be done. So do keep that in mind. Another thing in terms of multitasking and what's new in the home screen is that you can have up to 29 applications down here now, which is an amazing thing to have. So it does get very tiny, but just know that you're no longer capped at 18. You are now capped at 29 applications on your dock. So another thing you might've noticed while I was moving these applications around is that you have a new menu or taskbar. Leave a comment down below if it's a menu bar or a taskbar. I'm really kind of in between, but every single application you're on. So if, let's say I'm in the Chrome. If I just kind of go up here, you see that I now have that little menu bar on the top. And it's very reminiscent of Mac OS. If I tap in here, I can go into files, I can open up a new tab if I want to, so it opens up a secondary tab. I can edit, I have my control copy paste, and it also shows you all the shortcuts that you can then run if you do wanna run shortcuts on your keyboard. So every single application has their own version. So now I'm in the, so now if I click on the home app right here and go up, I'm now in the home app, and you can see that I have the files app here. I can add an accessory from here. I can edit stuff, view, copy. And again, every single application will have this. And even though we were able to do all the functions that are on here, everything now is just much more easily accessible. And it's more familiar if you are trying to be super productive on this iPad, because now it's much easier. And again, I'm gonna to continue to reiterate that even the iPad eighth generation, the one that was sold maybe five, six years ago, the one that you could probably buy used for 50 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, can do everything that I'm saying right here. Now, the only time that it really differentiates is going to be with extended monitor support. Extended monitor support is a little hit or miss. If you have an iPad with an M series chip, including the A12Z iPad Pro or newer, then you'll be able to have an extended monitor. So you'll be able to then extend to a secondary monitor and be able to do things on this display and then do something different on the secondary display. And all the same functions that I mentioned when it comes to the multitasking and the windowing mode will apply to that secondary display. But if you wanna plug in an iPad mini or an older iPad like that eighth gen, you can actually mirror the display onto a secondary display and then use it kind of like a, a Chromebook if you want to. So you can still make it larger and it still scales nicely. You just only mirror on some of those older iPads versus extending on some of the newer iPads. So another gigantic addition to iPadOS 26 is going to be the new Files application. So the Files application, there was always something missing with it on iPadOS, it just didn't feel right. And Apple added a few quality of life improvements and some Mac OS-like improvements as well to really make this feel like a true Finder application to find a replacement. So the first thing you're gonna notice here is that you actually have customizable columns finally. So if I wanna grab this and make it smaller, I can now do that, which is something that we couldn't do before. You have your three dots here, so you can add additional columns if you want to. So you can add your date created, last opened. Again, very similar to Mac OS in terms of being able to manage and move them around. Another option that you have in here that's brand new is if I, let's say, right click on here, I have the ability to add this to my dock. So I can add it to my favorites, but then also add it to my dock. If I go here and go to my dock, you can see that I have two folders here. I have my temporary folder, which is something that I use almost all the time. And then I have my untitled one, which is one that I just added. And then each one of these will have its own kind of form. So if I long press on here, you have additional customizable points here. So you can have it fan open, you can have it grid open. So if I tap on here, right now it's gonna fan open. If I hold it down and if I wanna do the grid view, I just press the grid view here. If I tap on here, it's gonna open up like a grid and then you can manage your files directly from your dock. So very familiar to Mac OS and making it just a lot more usable. Another thing that's awesome about the new files app is that there's background management tasks. So if I'm, let's say, transferring some files around between different folders, I can do that and let it be and it'll be a notification and when it's done, it'll let me know that it's done. So another great thing to see. When another way to manage your files, if I go on here, you can actually customize it, the folders and add tags. Previously, you can add tags, but now you can rename them, you can add tags, you can add emojis, and you can even change the color of the folder themselves. So if I go on here, I can make the folder orange if I want to. So tap on here, 
And then if I want to add, let's say this emoji, now that emoji is going to look or that folder is going to look like this color. And then it's very easy to kind of figure out exactly where it is. And you can just search it based on those tags, making it super, super simple. And then you might also notice that we have different carrots over here. So I can open each of these up the same way that I would open a Mac OS folder system. And then you're able to access those files as you see fit without needing to go somewhere else. You also have the ability to change how you view things. So if I, you can go with icon view, you can go with list view, you can go with column view as well, which is what we did before. Again, this is very reminiscent of Mac OS. And basically, Apple brought over all the, I guess, good things that we wanted from Mac OS and brought it over to iPad OS, which is something that we've been yearning for for years. And the Files app is the one that was really kind of annoying to deal with on iPad OS previous versions of iPad OS. But now it's pretty much a one to one to finder and it's much easier. And I'm no longer gravitating towards my Mac in order to manage a bunch of files and SSDs and things like that. So this is a huge update to how I use iPad OS. So those were the massive major updates that they brought over to make the iPad Pro more productive, but they didn't really stop there. They even added a few other things. So for instance, they added a few brand new first party applications to the iPad. The first one being the preview app. So yes, the preview app that's in Mac OS is now on iPad OS, which is something that I didn't even know that I wanted. And it works honestly better than the preview app on Mac OS. First, there's a little kind of Easter egg here. So if I grab this magnifier, you can kind of play with this to understand how liquid glass works, which is really cool. And then you have all the photos. So for instance, I can tap on this photo right here, which is one that I was working on for a video that we just did. Highly recommend checking this one out. But you have all the options that you would want. You can edit it with your Apple Pencil if you want to. You can resize it if you want to. You can turn it around if you want to. So it is kind of like a full on editor. And if I even want and if I even want to, I can pull the subject out. So I can long press on here and then copy the subject, add a sticker, share, do whatever I need to do. You can share from here. You can export it as a different file as well. You can adjust the size, rotate, flip them, remove the background if I want to. As you can see, boom, just like that, my background was removed with using Apple Intelligence. And I told myself I wouldn't really mention much of Apple Intelligence in this video because it really isn't much to mention. But this is one of the nice little quirks that happen with something like Apple Intelligence because it's learning as you go. So the preview app is robust, it works as expected, and any of the files that show up on your preview app on your Mac, as long as it's synced in iCloud, it'll show up here. So these are all in my preview app on my Mac. Super simple, super, super self-explanatory. And then they also added the game application. So this is just a new application where they consolidate all the different games that you played over the years. Like if I go into my library, I think there's games here from, I think like 2011, which is insane. But also you can see how Liquid Glass has taken over here. So if I move this over, another Liquid Glass element, but this is kind of cool. It's just kind of like Game Center, but a very easy way to access everything. So this is a brand new app. I recommend playing around with it, but more so for fun than anything else. The Journal app has now made an appearance on the iPad, which is something that should have been there since day one, because it's it's a, basically an app made for the iPad. So that's their Journal app is basically identical to iOS, but just on your iPad now. And then they also added a phone application. So you can see here, you just have everything that all the stuff that's coming into your iPhone is now coming onto your iPad as well. Again, Again, you can't use your iPad as your only phone here. Like your iPad doesn't have a cell phone number, but you're calling on behalf of your iPhone sometimes. And you can actually directly call from here if you want to via FaceTime audio or even just regular phone calls if you are connected to the internet or if you have a data cell connection. But it will be calling from your personal iPhone number and not calling from some random number that's in your iPad. So those are all applications that are brand new to the iPad, which I didn't think were coming. The preview app, the phone app were two apps that I didn't know that I wanted, but now they're here and I'm enjoying them. But now if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I do appreciate that because I know that this is going to be a long one. So big shout out to you, but leave a comment down below of something new that you learned or something that you're excited about. Have you installed this on your new iPad? Is it going to change the way that you view your iPad? Can it be more of a computer replacement? There's a few things that the iPad still cannot do versus Mac OS, like give you some terminal access, be able to get some actual coding done. But outside of that, the iPad is becoming a computer replacement for a lot of people. And the most beautiful thing is that it's not just limited to the pro level iPads or the new iPads. Like I said in the beginning, you can get an eighth gen regular iPad refurbished or used. I bet you can find it used for like 50 or hundred dollars and you can install the new iPad OS 26 and get the windowing mode and basically use it like a netbook or like a Chromebook very easily, very simply. So that is definitely the beauty of iPad OS 26. I'm very excited. It's kind of like Apple finally listened after eight years of me pushing that the iPad is a computer. So let me know in the comment down below what you think. If you made it all the way to this point, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know you made it to the end. And if you guys wanna watch more videos like this one, click on one of these right here and stay tuned for all our new iPhone coverage, which is coming at the end of the week. Peace everyone.